Hey everyone, Pratik here, back with another video. So, a few weeks ago, Harsh posted a tweet to bust your doubts and questions on bug bounty. Since the response was overwhelming, so we decided to do a discussion that is unanswered questions. So today we have Harsh Potra, who is a full-time penetration tester and part-time a bug bounty hunter. He is in a top 150 on bug crowd, Synac Red Team member and author of multiple books. So today we will be discussing the questions asked over his tweet. So try to answer all of your queries. So let's do this. So the first first question is automation of recon and doing automatic fuzzing on all the domains etc. How does one know when to move on a one particular target? Okay, so as I recently shared the project theme, uh, what we basically do is first we go about uh, innovating subdomain using like three four tools, and then we calculate the unique subdomain because each tool like produce almost same results, but we again have to calculate some unique domains. Now, once you have a collection of unique subdomains, we pass it through a resolver. I use HTTPX. Now, once you have resolved all the subdomains and filter them now, now you can use multiple tools. Like I basically uh, make use of Gao and Wayback URL to extract some uh, good URLs for the potential vulnerability identification, like cross-site scripting or something. Now, uh, then you can further use GF patterns to uh, like figure out, okay, these might be vulnerable to cross-site scripting or these might be vulnerable to SSR. Now, further, you can use tools like QReplace and some other tool like WFUS or uh, you can use FU, double FUF. So basically, you can use those tools to uh, define some particular uh, parameters or the endpoints where you want to perform fuzzing. Okay, uh, I do this fuzzing part manually using verb suit because I pretty much like verb suit over other fuzzing tools for like my own personal reasons. There is like nothing as such. You can use any tool based upon your preference. Okay. So the next question is how stay motivated in a bug bounty. I have finished OS produce shop and other testing labs. However, I do feel scary to actually test any real web app for vulnerabilities. So see brother, uh, there is no, like you have to fear about it. You can just go and some testing lab like sports vigor, uh, pen tester lab, and that is, you can try out on bug crowd or any VDP program. Okay. Just test it. Whatever vulnerability, you know, make one checklist, go for functionality wise, like, in sign up or forget password, uh, whatever you do attacks, just make a notes on that. Try each and everything and make a report. There is no to like fear about of. Yeah. To also one more them. thing over here is like, uh, what people usually do is they get too much comfortable with the labs, never get too much comfortable with the lab. For example, you are showing was you shop, you learn to find out some bugs like for say logical bugs, immediately go and start trying them instead of starting a new lab. For example, you finish do shop, then do not wait for starting like pen tester lab or web academy or the DVW. First go and see that what concepts you learn and try to apply them and see if they are like actually something you got out of them or not. Don't make yourself that much comfortable with the labs because then you will be like, okay, uh, in labs I can find vulnerabilities. Obviously labs are intentionally vulnerable. You will find vulnerabilities in them, but try to, uh, you know, get out of that comfortable zone so that, you know, you can actually get something good out of it. Okay. So the third question is like a should a beginner focus on a smaller bounty is like misconfiguration or just go for the remote code executions. No bro, this is a totally wrong thing. Uh, everyone starts from the P4 vulnerabilities and P5. So whenever I start a bug bounty, I just report like a uh, rate limiting account lockout, URL redirections, but try to chaining those bugs to big vulnerabilities like URL, uh, chaining like URL redirection to cross site scripting and SSRF also. Okay. You can chain XSS to CSRF also. So, Try to chaining vulnerabilities. So, how to convert a P4 to P1? I think one of my friend, my friend Hush, will give you a better example. Yeah. So the main thing over here, like there is nothing called a beginner cannot hunt for cross-site scripting or remote code execution. Or a beginner should only hunt for the small bounties, right? So once you know that what kind of vulnerability exists in the particular system, uh, wait for a while before like uh, blindly reporting anything. So for example, you went, you checked the cookies are insecure. There is no HTTP only flag set. Further after one hour, you found a cross-site scripting. Now chain both of the issues to show the real life session hijacking. Okay. Simply set up a grabber and cookie grabber and like do some remote cookie grabbing and see if you can actually uh, perform a session hijacking. Your XSS impact of P3 will basically go to P2 or somewhere like if program on is really good. It can also go to P1 because you made some efforts. You can get also some bonuses. So just forget about the mentality that, okay, the beginner should only hunt for the basic bugs, cannot go for RC. Uh, the one thing is 
critical bugs are not hard to exploit if they were be hard to exploit they would never be called critical okay so just make that mindset that anybody can hunt anything okay so the next question is how to choose a target program for beginners what are the bugs that a beginner should you look for so harsh what do you say about it for programs for beginners so uh, really i i uh, like specifically uh, when i go about bug bounty i prefer the programs with a very huge scope because uh, i really like doing reconnaissance on those and i can find those endpoints which other might not be looking so the, this is the first thing that if the target scope says the star dot target dot com is in scope or say everything is in scope this is my favorite kind of targets where i usually go and hunt about uh, secondly when it comes to hunting for the bugs obviously start from checking the session issues rate limiting issues and then further go about uh, if there are multiple user roles check for i know script escalation further go for the server side bugs like if there is some xml data being passed uh, on the server right try for xcc or there is some json data being passed try for json based injections yeah that's that's how you can like go up by attack one by one yeah so i uh, so if you are a beginner so i should suggest some vulnerabilities like clear text password submissions try to hunting bugs on like a cms out of band resource loads to http lfi html injections xss okay and you can go for like a no rate limiting long password dos attacks csrf idos catcher disruptions password reset poisoning uh, lack of password confirmation or delete account like if you are a lucky uh you will get a bounty so as so a next uh, next question is uh, what is your approach while hunting for a bug in a program okay so i follow like a totally opposite approach like i start from the subdomains or like the third degree subdomains so i i go by the maximum depth first and then i start hunting on the main, main application the first thing like usually people do not look at the maximum depth and there are like a lot of end point which people like miss it right so for example there is a subdomain say target 1.target2.target.com now i will start by enumerating the ports what are the open ports over there i will run fuzzing like directly searching over the open ports if there are some open ports because a lot of time you will find a lot of cmss or some uh, proprietary softwares Uh, which might be running with the default credential and they are easy to guess usually they are like admin password admin admin and they are easy key ones right so for those who are like uh, struggling into finding key ones or something try to just change the approach a bit look at those areas where other might not be looking at there is nothing like a secret that i got 50 key ones or i got 10 key ones okay so as the next question is do you stick with one bug and search in the whole web app or is there any sequence for finding your bugs okay so uh, for me like i am a full time pen tester so for me it's not like that hunting one bug throughout the application i crawl the application first like i give like 2 3 hours to understand the application how application uh, works what are the kind of functionalities of the application how many user roles are there i completely map out the application i know what kind of data is passed so for example application using json application using jwt token or maybe using graphql or maybe just simply passing data in the uh, Uh, you know normal html encoding encoded or html body form so i go about checking that what all applications components are how the application is working based upon that i quickly create a uh, say threat model or a mind map of the possible attack vectors so i know okay these are like some 10 input endpoints where i can basically go and check for sql injection or maybe html injection or uh, cross site scripting there are like four user roles so basically i check for the uh, direct request insufficient authorization i can check for access control so then i start checking them and for each request i check all the bugs over there and then at the last when i have like crawled the application completely with the bug suit then i sometimes like go about uh, uh, gut feeling right so i i might like uh, find a direct request direct request is basically uh you are not authorized to access the slash admin directory but you can do that directly by requesting in the url slash admin so this is how i like i approach okay and what are the best hands on practice labs so i will sure suggest sports figure os web got fantastic labs they sh- three you should try on try it os juice shop juice shop is also good so according to me you should go for was juice shop it's it's good for the, uh, testing the practical vulnerabilities because it do not tell you like it do not have specific section for each vulnerability like okay uh, go to this tab and uh, test for cross site scripting so this is again a challenge so that you can find out go for pentester labs essential badge i guess they also have a vm for free version yeah. you can deploy the vm and you can these are the 60 challenges and if you solve them by your own right you will nail in the bug bounty for sure 
and you can also like offer a thirty dollar three month thing. It's really good for students and anybody can like uh, you know people basically say that we are students or we are you know uh, not able to afford such things. See to get something you all like want like dollars or dollars of bounty, but even thirty to forty dollar investment is according to me is like not a big deal. We yeah. spend that much thing on like just having the food from Zomato or Swiggy, right? Yeah. So you can like basically spend that that much amount. Sports Figure Web Academy is again a nice thing. Uh, Infosec write ups, all the medium write ups are really good on their uh, this medium publication, and Hacker One's Disclose Timeline. So these are the very good to go resource to you know uh, learn about new methodology and everything. Which programming languages are required? Like if you do automation of your low hanging fruits, so you can learn Python. Bash scripting, and like if you go for a uh, Android pen testing, Core Java is must. Like if you understand the source code, you can exploit that vulnerability proper. Like if you go for IS pen testing, and you have to understand Swift programming languages. So that's for my my side. Harsh will give you answer better. Yeah. So pretty much, pretty already told you about like what uh, kind of language you should know. But uh, I would like to add just only one thing. uh you should need not to know how to program in a particular language except for the bash or python if you want to automate something but in a uh, regular bug bounty when you are testing something you should know that how the code is working uh if there is a function being provided to you in a java or ruby or php or any language you should know that what the functions use is because you should read to know the logic of that particular function so if you know for example c language or python language or any language and you are very much good at with reading the logics in one language you can do it with any other language so Just make sure that you are comfortable reading any programming language which is being provided to you. Okay. Best automation recon script. So I will suggest Osmedius, Project Beam, and Rangin. Rangin tool. Rangin is a like GUI recon tool that is also good. Okay. Yeah. What to do with the recon data? Like approach to finding server side bugs apart from the obvious parameters and functions. Okay, so like once you have a lot of recon data, the recon data is all about like having your attack surface increase. So as I told you, like once you do wayback search or you get all URL and everything, you will get a list of many URLs with the many endpoints getting data through it. So basically, you can use various graph patterns, so you can cut data for specific parameters. You can run SQL injection, uh, sorry, uh, SQL map in a batch mode, or you can try to uh, run LFI suit, SSR of map. You can use QS replace to uh, manually put the payload, uh, sorry, um, put the payload for SSR of like work collaborator link, and then simply put a curl request for all those particular URLs and see if they are like giving you some results or something. Uh, for LFI, RFI, you can also like first using the yep. using tools like FQFF. Or other tools, which is your preference? Like, so I basically use Dart Search and FFUF. These are like my favorite tools, and Bobsuit is obviously like one of the best tool. It, uh, it does all the job from fuzzing to you know uh, doing the proxy stuff to intruding and everything. So, Bobsuit is uh, the most tool that I should always suggest. Hunting and learning from last four months and doesn't get any valid buck. Okay, so telling you my own story. Uh, till the Feb, March, and April mid, I used to get a lot of duplicates. I just only had hundred points on bug crowd. I changed my approach totally. I started look at those areas where other might not be looking. And now, how you identify those areas? Just dig deep. That's it. Go to the maximum depth first, and then start hunting on the main main application. Second rule is, if you will only hunt for SPF DMAR, or if you will only hunt for like rate limiting issues or like session issues, obviously you will get a lot of duplicates. Duplicates. Uh, level up your game. Look for IDORs. Look for cross site scripting. Look for CSRF. IDOR is something which will hardly you will see as a duplicate because organization fix IDOR very quickly because they just have to implement a small logic in their code. There is not a big code change. So uh, try hunting for IDORs or SQL injections or SSRF. These vulnerabilities will rarely you will see as a duplicate. Okay, you can do GitHub reconnaissance. Sometimes, like if they are like very much, uh, uh, you know, uh, sensitive data like AWS secrets or credentials, organization will immediately go and change them. It just take them a single click to change it. Okay, so look for those bugs, and there will be a less chance of getting duplicates. Okay, so the next question is how to pen test APIs and how do we identify them? What vulnerabilities lies in zero op and how to exploit them? Okay, so that's a good question. So uh, when I talk about API pen testing, for me, API pen testing is almost same as web application because uh, usually most of the APIs they originate from the web web request itself. 
Okay, so initially there used to be a single tier protocol where uh, all the requests used to go through web. There was no separate request for everything. So, for example, you want to change address, the address changing request will involve changing your profile and everything. Now, with the REST APIs, you can basically uh, change your address by its own. It, it's uh, like basically a separate endpoint itself. So, what you can do is you can simply test all the I dot functionality or all the same test cases that you perform over web. Secondly, you can fuzz APIs using various paths and see if there is some hard coded path. So, for example, API is having a version say v2 slash users endpoint. Try to switch v2 to v1 or v0 or something like that, or try to remove that v1 parameter itself and see if you are getting some sensitive data out of it. Try to change the delete method to get method and see if you can fetch some data out of it or not. And try to convert the delete method or put method into like post or get and uh, then say question mark method equals to put or get or post and see if you can uh, get some data or not. These are like several bypasses that I use for APIs. Uh, for OAuth, there are certain misconfiguration there are OAuth with CSR apps and things like that. I, I would like highly recommend going up on Pentester lab to go and solve about it because it's it's really adaptive topic. You should first know that how OAuth works, what are all kind of uh, you know client secret communications are being involved in the OAuth. Okay, for zero, I suggest you go for a buck crowd. There is a one talk up for Pranav Hevrekar is give about a zero or this yeah, is also great. that is also a great talk. Uh, Hans, the next question is Bob plugins and tips. Best Bob plugins. Okay, so for that, recently, like yesterday itself, yesterday uh, I posted like around uh, 25 Bob plugins that I use. So, quickly to name a few, use Scan Check Builder, which is Bob Bounty. Uh, again, a signature based, like it, it detects using your passive and active scanner. There are some certain profiles that you can go and check about. Then there are uh, like flow, HTTP, request smuggler. Then you can use the tool like web, uh, webcast reception scanner, uh, reflected file download checker. Then you can uh, use authorize, which is good authorize for find us. Yeah. Uh, broken access controls. You can use auth matrix for pre escalation. Uh, you can use active scanner plus plus to again increase the capabilities of the active scanner. You can use Freddy for the deselection person. The complete list and how. They are useful is posted on my Twitter and at Harshwater underscore. You can go and check it out. Okay. So there is a next question is a carrier related. Everyone says don't rely on bug bounty for a living as a BTEC student in India without any known certification. What should be one's way of getting into InfoSec to get intern or job certification are too costly for a student and everyone asks for the either experience or certification. Yeah, so I guess Pratik, you are like a better person to answer this thing because you are right now a student. So go no. ahead answering it. See, whenever I applied any jobs, they're asking for experience or either there is some mandatory certification like a CH and OSCP. So like if you have a good hall of fame, a good profile on Buck Crowd or Hacker One, there is a may get a chances for a job like because you are already doing a pen testing for Hacker One and you have a good score. But the thing is, Company at least have some criteria like if you are good in bug bounty that that's okay, but they don't uh, Consider as an experience like you are doing a bug bounty, but that not consider as an experience like if you are a sit on a company you are doing job uh, As a pen tester on the company then will be experience. So at least you have to do a struggle. That's I say so, uh, just to like uh, give you a small like a uh, simple answer over this question uh, yeah. When we say that we are good at bug bounty, but as a student, we cannot afford like uh, certification, we contradict ourselves. We are good at bug bounty. At least it means that we are earning something out of bug yeah. bounties. And CH roughly cost you like 40,000, I guess, or 30,000 something. Okay. 30, I guess when I did, it was like something around 25 to 30,000. Okay. Yep. So 30,000 is like a $500 bounty. $500 if you say or okay. that you are at good, good at bug bounty, then you are actually contradicting yourself. Right? Yeah, sure. So if you have a basic uh, certification like CH, Okay, you are good at bug bounty, you have good knowledge of web and API. Try for small security startups like Payar2 and some other companies instead of going for the big fours because big four have some criteria that you have to face, that you have to be a VTech student and things like that. If you will go for small startup, they will rather judge your knowledge over the certificate and the degree. So this is okay. what I can suggest based from my own experience. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. Okay, don't rely on bug bounty. You have at least need a job. Okay. Harsh also doing a bug bounty, but he is really doing a great job. Uh, he is now joining on DataPs Technologies. Congratulations, bro. Thank you. Okay. So I am also doing a CH. I also clear the CH. Okay. So using Bug Bounty, you can, you can pay your certification fees.
So the next question is how do you plan the series of tests and you should perform on various domains? So as I told that uh, when I start calling the application, I first go and check what all the endpoints are, what how the application passing the data, what kind of libraries they are using. Once I visually inspect the application, I simply create a threat model of the application. Okay, so for example, there are multiple user roles. So I can basically go and check for the broken access control and previous escalation. So there is an e-commerce website, say there is a card functionality. I can abuse the card functionality by like adding the products in the negative quantity and the price list. Uh, there is a review functionality in the e-commerce application. I can basically go and see if I can post a review without purchasing the product as a purchase review or right. something, right? So these are some of the business logic vulnerabilities that you can go and check for. If you see that, okay, there are like certain input fields, there are some certain callback parameters in the URL which are going on. So you can basically go and check for if you can do reflected file downloads, if you can do XSS, LFI, RFI, SSR over those parameters, right? If there are some ID parameters going on, which are fetching the values from the server side, try for SQL injection. If you know that it's a MongoDB application, try specifically for MongoDB. No MongoDB SQL injection, there's no, no sense trying SQL over there. You will not find any luck. Right. Okay. So once you once you move and get some experience testing Python application, you will you will get to know that what to test and what not to test. Okay. So also next question is how do you determine that a particular segment might be vulnerable? Okay. As I again told that visually inspecting gives you an idea. Then again performing some certain test cases. So for example, there's an input field. I, I want to check for uh, say cross site scripting. I will first use simple HTML injection payload, say H1 test H1, right? I will see that how the application is encoding or it's not encoding at all. If I find that, okay, application is encoding some particular data, then I will try to use double encoding method or some other bypasses to see if it can be like uh, bypassed. If there is any web, I will try to use some specific characters which might be uh, able to bypass that web restrictions. Okay, uh, these days webs are like uh, daily updating their databases and it's really hard to find out a new payload each and every day. So you have to like just figure it out. And uh, if there is some IDOR functionality, you have to see that how application is behaving on uh, supplying some various kind of inputs. So say there is a parameter called uh, success is equals to false in the response. Try to add a parameter called success equals to true in the oh. request itself and see if it's uh, uh, getting bypassed. A lot of time it get bypassed because Bypass. there is no restriction of parameter being used on the server side. Yep. So this is how like usually we go about identifying issues. Uh, should people stick to four to five bugs like IDOS, XSS, SQLite, and neglect the rest according to their comfort? Uh, I feel like uh, no. As a full-time pen tester, I prefer testing for each and every one of the issues. Yeah. So because as a pen tester, I can say that I test for each and every vulnerability. This is how I do in my job as well as in bug bounty, I test for each and every vulnerability. Unless you are like too much comfortable with only few bugs and you are happy with them, it's it's up to totally your choice that you can do that. But I suggest if you want to someday move into a full-time pen testing job, uh, make yourself comfortable with testing from zero to Z, everything. New trending vulnerabilities, like, okay. So you can go for SSRF, okay, GraphQL injections, template injections, catcher disruptions. Uh, and you can go for a Java deserializations, okay? Authorization issues, you can go for it. Just that I know, okay. Also, be aware about the CVs which are being dropped daily yeah. on the Twitter and everywhere. This is really important. Uh, you can go obviously about GraphQL pen testing. Again, that's a booming thing. Uh, SAML, OAuth, open uh, this open uh, are, authorization yeah. standards like them. Also, the broken lake hijacking, uh, GitHub reconnaissance. Again, reconnaissance is really in the boom. Uh, and since the UPI is being released by Project Discovery, it's doing a really great job in automatic recon and finding some signature-based vulnerabilities, right? So you can you can do that as well. Okay, Harsh. So the last question is like, I have too much recon data from URLs, JS files, endpoints, word list, parameters, etc. So thanks to your talks, but I don't know clearly how to proceed after that, that collection of data. Now what I do. Okay. Let's start from subdomains. Once we resolve the subdomain, what I do is I basically crawl each and every resolved subdomain manually to see what they are returning. If there is any application hosted, how many result in, again, going to the main application. Then I create a list of unique websites each and every time. And I save them in a separate file manually. I go and manually test them. This is the first aspect. 
Okay. Secondly, once you pass them over nuclei, nuclei does a great job by identifying some of the common uh, vulnerabilities based upon the signature. If uh, you can go and manually verify them if they are actually right, true positives, then you can go and report them. Then, if there are JS file, you can basically uh, say cat and the JS files uh, crawling data, and then say grab five commands, say grab and search for specific keywords, say password, okay. secret, uh, API, or something like that. Then. Since you have this particular result list of domains with you, uh, say simply say cat and then this particular file, say pipe command and use githound hyphen hyphen dig files hyphen hyphen dig commits to automate the GitHub reconnaissance. Uh, then when you have like a list of URLs from the way back and go, uh, so you use GF pattern to extract uh, access potential vulnerability, uh, the URLs or you found SSRF based, then use uh, tools like say Delfox for automating accesses, access SSRF, SSRF map for uh, SSF, SSRF. Uh, you can use uh, this uh, SQL map for the batch mode to test for SQL injections. Yeah, this is where you can utilize the recon data. Okay, so almost so in the Twitter, I see there's a many common questions. So I almost pick the very good questions. So thank you for your time, Harsh. It will be a very thank great you. discussions. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Pratik, for having this. And yeah. uh, if you still have any doubts, you can uh, ping me and Pratik anytime on the Twitter. You can tweet us, and we will try best to reply at our earliest possible. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, guys, if you like this video, then press the thumbs up. And if you are new on my channel, then press the subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell icon. So whenever I post a video, you will get the notification. Make sure, guys, you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Okay. Bye bye. This is Pratik Gavi. Over and. Hello